a programme about fish. It always seems to me so sad that Britain, who is surrounded by seas which produce the finest fish in the world, takes so much of this fish richness for granted and doesn't exploit it to its fullest in homes and kitchens. There are so many excellent fish that are not practically not so well known, they're not in such common usage, simply because people don't realise how good they are. A typical example is mussels. Now I've just put a couple of pints in here, so as I've given you four pint quantities in the booklet, I shall be using half quantities of everything else. And I'm going to add into this saucepan with the mussels a, a medium-sized raw coarsely grated onion. Then I'm going to use parsley stalks because there's much more flavour in those than in the pretty heads to use for garnish and with them a few peppercorns in they go. Then a quarter of a pint of an inexpensive dry white cooking wine followed by half a pint of tap water. And lastly, not essential, but very nice if you can find it, a piece of fennel. I'm going to put it against my hand so that you can see this feathery herb, which with dill makes the pair of especially good with fish herbs. I grow this in my own garden and have it all year round. So bring a bit indoors in the winter. You add that, if you can find it, then you put the lid on, and then I'm going to take this tray away and give this saucepan to Simon, who's here to help me again and give him a full gas underneath. Now what you do is you begin by bringing the liquid, the mixed liquids, to the boil. And while you're doing so, you once or twice during the cooking time which follows, which I'll also explain, you give the pan a shake like this. And that distributes all those odd bits of onion and things I put in and gets the liquor moving around in the mussels. Now, you give it from the time the liquid comes to the boil, there's quite a bit in there, you give it about the time it takes you to count 60 very slowly, or a minute to a minute and a quarter, up to, if you're going to cook them completely that way, which we're not going to do now, about a minute and a half to two minutes. Now, I've chosen to share with you a dish called, well, it's an Italian dish, and it's cocci gratinati, just a dish of baked mussels to us in English. And the reason, particularly, apart from the fact that I think it's an excellent one and it's not very well known, is because on the way, this way, that Simon is doing now, you are making a couple of other dishes before you do the completed process of the baked ones because by the time those are cooked in their liquor and their flavorings, they can be eaten and the liquor drunk as a soup. You can strain the liquor for grander occasions and add cream, which makes it very smooth and delicious. And so you do get one and a half, if not two, for the price of one before you come to the actual dish itself. Now, while we're waiting for those to cook, I want to talk about the really important thing, the cleaning of mussels before you cook them. In this sink, I've got masses of them, and the water that I've tossed them into, straight from the fishmonger, is very dirty. It shows that there's a lot to remove from them. And so first of all, you take a nail brush and you scrub all your shells very, very carefully. Now, when you've scrubbed those shells, you've got the outside imperfections off, which, of course, would go into your liquor when you were cooking if you put them in the pan without so doing. Now I want you to look at this little pile which I put on a white swab on my draining board here. These three here are broken, so they're dead and so you must throw them away. This one here is partially open, although the shell is not broken at all. That you must also throw away, because once a raw muscle is open, or open through being broken, it is dead and it will give you a very nasty pain in your tummy if you eat it. Now, it's very simple to pick out a muscle which is closed, like this one here, from one which is like that one, open or like these, broken. And so you know perfectly well that you are safe in picking the closed ones once you have scrubbed them and done the last process, which I'm going to show you now. Hanging from each one is something which we call a beard. This is a nasty sort of greyish black tassel, and this would not eat well at all. So you take hold of it quite firmly and you pull it off and throw it away. And there you've got another closed, safe to eat muscle. So you only have to remember to scrub, to beard, and when they are closed, there's hardly any beard on that one, when they are closed, you can then go ahead and cook them happily, but never in any circumstances cook the open ones or the broken ones. That's enough of that. I'm sure you'll remember it. There goes Simon shaking the muscles. Now, while we're waiting for them, we're going to tackle another dish. And in previous programs, we have studied together the making of mayonnaise, vinaigrette, basic white sauce, and the turning of that with the adding of cheese and seasonings into cheese sauce or sauce mornay, 
and also the frying of fish and the making of fine pancakes. These things are going to crop up again today. They are going to do so not in their original guise, that would be repetitious, but as part of dishes which are not more elaborate, but which illustrate how enormous arc of variations which can be tried in the kitchen on very simple basic themes. They are almost endless. This one with pancakes is called Crepe Bon Viveur because my husband and I created it. It's pancakes with a special fish filling. But the fish filling itself is quite elaborate. You remember we stored our pancakes by putting them on sheets, squares of greaseproof paper and then wrapping them in foil and putting them so that they could wait for three to four days in mild refrigeration. Now I'm going to do four of them in front of you. The rest I have rolled up and done and I've put in a buttered fireproof dish. So now for the filling. Well, this is our own special one. I'll talk about variations on the theme in a moment. That's either six ounces of chopped prawns, shelled, of course, or six ounces of shrimps, to which I then add a generous dollop, about a tablespoonful and a half, of real mayonnaise. That we know, too. Then with that, just a little whipped cream, one heaped, generously heaped dessert spoon is more than enough, well, is enough. And then just a few drops from a teaspoon of anchovy puree. After that, when you've got them, a few chives, they're optional. About half a quantity, a tablespoonful of parsley, about half a quantity of the chives when you've got them. So in goes the freshly milled parsley. Then a small amount of pepper, no salt because of the salty anchovy puree and also the certain amount of salt in the prawns or shrimps. And finally, a few drops of lemon juice. So then strain lemon juice naturally. Then you mix the whole lot together. And this makes a most delicious dish which for entertaining purposes, when you have people to the house, is enormously labour-saving because you can get the main part of it done and you only have the cooking to do at the last moment. Now you simply dollop your mixture onto your spread out, also pre-prepared pancakes, you see? Like this. I shan't use it all because there's enough here altogether for eight pancakes. So I shall put that away and then you simply roll them up like this into fat rolls and then you put them, as I've done with these three already, into a buttered well buttered heat resistant dish that goes one two and the third one in there and the fourth one in the middle on the top which is the way I always do it now in a moment I will draw your attention and you will notice as we go through the program the details of an alternative filling that I will tell you here and now that you can use far less elaborate fish for you can substitute the cream for white sauce that basic white sauce I spoke of but when you do the original dish like this, you take a little thin basic white sauce and you add to it about one-eighth of its bulk in single or coffee cream. And then you pour that over the top, like this. When you pour it on top, you add cheese. Now you can choose which cheese you use of the hard kinds. Cheeses which go stale, like the most humble of all, which is mousetrap, to the classic which I'm using here, which, of course, is parmesan. And you sprinkle that liberally with parmesan. Then you cover it with a little kitchen foil if the dish that you have hasn't got a lid. And away it goes into mild refrigeration to await your pleasure. You can do it the night before for a luncheon party the next day or when you're having guests, or you can do it just a simple affair, or you can do it in the morning and serve it in the evening. With fish, I don't counsel doing it more than that amount of time in advance. So now we want a little bit of kitchen foil to cover the top. And then away that goes, when you're good and ready, into the oven at gas mark four, one shelf below centre, for 25 to 30 minutes. If you find that you're not satisfied that the crepe are brown enough when you take them out of the oven, you only just need to put that lightly over the top. If the crepe are not brown enough, then whip the foil off and slip it under the grill for a few seconds to give it that rich brown bubbly look. And that is crepe bon viveur. Simon will cook them, we shall see them later, here come the mussels. It only remains for me to remind you that the scalloped haddock that we're going to make presently makes a splendid alternative, much less costly filling for simple family occasions, and indeed there will be others which I will try to mention before the end of the programme. Now come back to our mussels. They should have opened by now, the good ones anyway. So we shall see. 